So this is related to first thing is uh, function and precondition for differentiation. So in general differentiation of a function meaning you are differentiating a function meaning you are finding the slope of the curve curve means it's a function of the a point this is a concept actually we are trying to find the slope of a, a curve how slope acts in this for example you are seeing some bridge is going like that, okay. Like a flyover or whatever. Okay. So that like that. And you are seeing flyover. And you are driving in this direction. So you can only see up to part. We don't know what is there on the other side. Okay. So from here to here you are able to see. You can view this. And you can say the slope is steep. It's going down steep. So that means slope can be found out because you are able to see something. If someone says this is for example just one kilometer, one kilometer you can see and that's what it is. So what is the slope after this one kilometer? Somewhere here at this okay? At this point, that's a two kilometer point. What is the slope? Obviously, you say you don't know because you can't see. Maybe from the top you are seeing, and you see the bridge is broken. The bridge is somewhere here. Two meters is here. So when it is broken, you can't find a slope because there is no bridge at all, right? So if there is a break or this, you know, there is something like a broken thing, this is called not continuous. Not continuous. So there are some functions continuous and there are functions which are not continuous and they are discontinuous functions. So there is a discontinuous there are breaks and there are jumps also. So these breaks or jumps occur at, at some point. For example, this bridge is continuous up to there and it's broken for this entire part. That means it is not continuous here. So even though it is not continuous, nobody will go under the bridge side. Right? So the entire bridge is useless and we call it as a non-usable or discontinuous bridge. In the same way, even if there is one point, even if there is one point at which the function is discontinuous or there is a jump, we call this entire function to be discontinuous function. So the extension is function is defined in each of So it is A, comma B, and in that interval, the function is continuous or discontinuous. Okay. Continuous is very easy, no break, no jump. No break, no jump. Okay. I'll tell you what is this break or jump. Okay. So we have f of x defined f of x equal to x y. So whatever x values we can take, we can take, we write the x values this side. These are the x values. And these are the f of x values. This side. These are the f of x values. So you tell any number x, whatever is the x number x, any x number, 
any number, whatever it is, it's fine. 0, 0, 1, 5 can be minus 0, 0.2, 3, 6, whatever. You have a y, if you just square that number, you will get that 0, 0, 1 square or minus 0, 0.0 to 3 square. So, for e belonging to the real number, there exists a topic that also belongs to real number. So you may see a function be something like that. This is a perfect for the structure. No break. Right, this is for continuous function. It is continuous for every x. It is continuous, function is continuous for every that means it is defined as a three. That means the perfect is defined. Defined. That means we have a, a specific value for the perfect, and that is unique. Unique value. Okay. Now let's talk about what is not continuous, and what is a jump distance, and what is a break distance. So if you have a function, yes, f of x equal to 1 by x. So when x equal to 1, f of x equal to 1. When x equal to 2, right, f of x equal to 1 by 2 equal to 3, f of x equal to 1 by 3. Got it, right? So, it will be if you join them, it will be going like that. Can you tell me what is the value of f of x equal to 0? At x equal to 0, what is f of x value? 1 by 0. Undefined, undefined, undefined. I think infinity or something like that. You say that undefined. So that means it, it, it's gone like that. It is a break. It will never have a value. Similarly, when x becomes infinity, when x is equal to very high value, like for example infinity, what is that? It is a one by infinity. Also, we don't know. That means cut. It will never touch this exact. So this is called a break. Break in the it has break at zero. That means this function has a break at x equal to zero. So the function is not continuous at x equal to zero. When I give x equal to minus one, for example, this is what actually means of break x equal to minus one. F of x equal to one by minus one. Which is minus one. So when I have minus one, the value is minus one. That is this. And like that, if you give minus two, okay, it will be minus half. So you will have like that. So only at x equal to zero, we don't know what is value. So this is called a break. And therefore, this function is a good example of a not continuous function. This is not continuous. But it is like, you know, I just did only one mistake. I have said uh, the paper is not correct. It is mistake. So only one mistake. When this fellow is thinking that even one mistake, one point is not continuous, it is not continuous. Okay? Okay, let's suppose I do. And I will just say, I want for the values of x, x if x is between 1 and 25, I want to get any value between 1 and 25. So if I give x equal to 1, 1 by 1, I got the value. And I give any value between 25, so it is continuous, no break, isn't it? So if you are fixing the, the x, 
this is what is going to run then it will continue on the right because the discontinuous point we ignored we have eliminated this point so at all other points it is continuous so the next exercise is about this is determining which one is a continuous function which one is not a continuous function the next one i talk about is a break discontinuity which we which we briefly stated in the mv mean value theorem and uh, there is something like like a greatest integer function greatest integer function and if you remember we have drawn the graph something like up to 0 to 1 it's like that and from that to there is like that from there to there is like that remember that Okay, this is this is zero. This is one, and we fill the edges, and this is a hollow. We fill like that, and this is a hollow. And if you ask actually, at x equal to zero, whatever is the fill value, the fill the fill is the actual value. So the fill is the value, meaning when x equal to zero. Equal to zero. F of x equal to zero. This is zero. The next one, point five. F of x equal to this is a point five. Zero only. And let's suppose x equal to one. X equal to one. It is a hollow. That means you don't take this value. So x equal to one. The value. Then you say, "No, I'm seeing at one. It has got a hollow circle also. It has got a fixed circle also. This is called a, a jump circle. So this is called a jump circle." Between zero and one, you got a straight line. It was straight. So between zero to one, it is continuous. From one to two, here here, it is continuous because it is a line. From Two to three, also continuous, but only at x equal to one, at x equal to two, at x equal to three, right? This is discontinuous. Understood? This function is represented at a pocket with a wire bracket like this. This is called a greatest integer function. So remember, like last time we were doing the MVT, we came back uh, to this page and asked you to. See this graph and explain again what I said. So graphically, yes, fine. We can find out that this is, this is what the discontinuous is. From the graph, we can make out. So we get a question: Do we need to draw the graph every time in order to find out wherever the discontinuous is? There? So the answer is no. We don't need to draw the graph. So only we will use the concept. To determine, to find this continuous. So I'll tell a simple example. Okay. Suppose we are clapping. We want to make a clap. We are using our own hand. Whether we close our eyes or open our eyes, we can still make left palm touch the right palm. And we can make a clap. Even a blind man also can make a clap, right? So it's no big deal. It's not. Let us suppose now we define the clap is to be made between two people, left hand of one person and then the right hand of other person. Okay, and both when they open their eyes and they can see and they can make a clap. Let us suppose both are supposed to close their eyes. And now we want to make a clap. So we just start counting three, two, one, zero. Do you know many times we miss? The hands may not exactly touch each other. Correct. So, and then we miss it, and I say I don't know why I miss it. 
Okay, but then that's what happens because in mind you think you are moving exactly in the right direction, then you do a little bit change, but then it will miss the other hand. So that's the way actually we can explain saying that if there is a left hand limit and there is a right hand limit and a value. This is called left hand limit, direct value, right hand limit at a at a particular point. Okay, at a point if all these are equal, this is important. Okay, if all these are equal, these values, then we call the function continuous. Okay. Now I will first explain the if you remember the limit. Remember the limit or not? Forgot it. Looks like my internet is not stable. Like my internet is like breaking. Think. Hello? So, yeah, I can hear you. So, do you remember the limit? Vaguely? Yeah, your voice is very low, but it's fine. I mean, no, not an issue. Now, let's suppose I will explain that you got f of x equal to x plus five. Understand this example because this is the same way we'll be using entire for all the questions. Okay, but this is an example. F of x equal to x plus five. You can any real number x belongs to R. This is what is the Question. Now, what is our left hand and right hand thing? Okay. What I will do is, let us suppose we are talking about what is the continuity at at x equal to, for example, c. X equal to c. The continuity. Okay. Continuity. This is what we need to do. So, what I will do? There is obvious number line or whatever. So you can draw the function. So this is x equal to c. So what I will do left to the left, I will take something, and to the right side, I will take something. And that is called if I put c minus h, x equal to c minus h, x equal to c, is x equal to c, and x equal to c plus h. This what I have to substitute it to the f of x. That means f of e minus h. This is the left hand function. This is the function f of c. E. This one f of c plus h is the right hand function. Right hand. This is left hand. This is left hand means f of this x equal to e. Now afterwards, we we said this h is, and we are saying h is so small that you can actually reduce that, you know, the window. That's why what we do is h tending to zero, f of c minus h. This entire thing is called as this one is called as h. This one, this one is f of c. If this value equal to this value, and that equal to limit h tends to zero, f of c plus h. If all these are equal, then f of x is continuous at x equal to c. We only say at x equal to c. That means when we say f of x is continuous at x equal to c, there is no break or there is no jump at x equal to c. We will apply this technique now for f of x equal to x plus 5 at x equal to some value. I will give x equal to some value and we will apply this technique here. Okay? So check the discontinuity. Check the discontinuity for this function x equal to, we want to check the discontinuity at x equal to, say 
20. Okay. So now left hand limit is the h tends to 0. This h will be there in entire chapter. Okay. And this is how I use and the books like Audi Sharma and many other books use. But in some places, in the colleges also, they do C plus C minus and all. That is a confusing technique. That's why we use this H. Limit H, this is what I'm writing. Limit H tends to 0, F of, that means X plus 5, right? We have X plus 5. So we are having C is this. So 20 minus C plus 5. Because X plus 5 is my function, right? This is a direction. Okay. Then direct value is 20 plus 5. You must see it in the edge, right? You do not think this edge. 20 minus H I should be writing. 20 minus C minus H I should be. This is 20 plus 5. It will do the direct. And the other one is twenty plus C plus five. Sorry, twenty plus H. Twenty plus H plus five. Now, first thing we do is we substitute zero in this. So we'll have twenty plus five. This is an HM. The direct value is 25. This one is equal to 0, 20 plus 5. This is our HM. All these are equal, 25 equal to 25 equal to 25. Therefore, f of x is continuous at x equal to 20. Understood? Okay. This is what is the technique we are using. There are two types of questions. One is like polynomial question and the p12 function. So different functions we will be using in this exercise and then coming out whether it is a continuous or not continuous function. This is important because section E is one question, can mark question. In that, part A of the question will be integration or linear programming. Then other part will be from this chapter. So from this chapter guarantee question. One is a four mark question, other one is another two mark question. So let's start doing exercise five point one. Prove that the function f of x equal to five x minus three is continuous at x equal to 0, at x equal to minus 3, and at x equal to 5. So, you are seeing that it is right. So, f of x is equal to 5x minus 3. And we have to check and we see. is our C value, x equal to C. Three different questions are there. So now let's go with the first one, case one. So x zero, which implies that our C equal to zero. C minus h will be C minus h is nothing but 0 minus h, that's equal to minus h. C plus h. C plus h. C equal to 0 plus h, that's equal to plus h. Now, an H. I will just draw the three lines and I will start doing. Actually. 
So let's let's put the direct first. That means what? I'm substituting t equals into this. That is nothing but therefore t is the direct. Left hand is therefore t minus h. This is therefore t plus h. So f of t equals f of zero. That is equal to five into zero minus three. So that is equal to minus three. Any question for f of t equal to minus three? No, correct. Now f of t minus we already found t minus h value equal to minus h. That means we will be getting f of minus h. F of minus h, you are substituting minus h into this. 5 to minus h minus 3. That is minus 5h minus 3. This f of t plus h is with an h equal to 5 into h minus 3. So I have to apply the limit. H tends to 0 minus 5H minus 3. So you are substituting H to 0. Means you have a value minus 3. Here limit H tends to 0 by H minus 3. So it's minus 3. So we have that H which is minus 3 equal to direct equal to RHA which is minus therefore okay. the function f of x is continuous h x equal to 0 any question No. So we will be doing exactly the same thing for x equal to minus 3, for x equal to 5. Actually, by looking at that, we can say you will get the same value. Right? So still I can do. So what I can do, otherwise for case 2, case 3, x equal to minus 3, case 2 would be x equal to minus 3. That is nothing but c is just minus 3 and k t would be x equal to 5. That means c is 5. So we will do the exactly similar thing. So directly we write, I am doing with LHL. Can you tell me the steps now for x 
equal to 5 or your uh, micro point might is not good. So let's say when the x tends to 0, it is 5. So 5 minus 5, 5 tends to 5 minus h minus this one is init x tends to 0, 5 into 5 plus h minus h. So direct value. It's a 5x minus 3. So 5 5 plus 25 minus 3 is 20. Here also you are putting 0. That's why you get 22. Okay. This also you will get as 22. Therefore, f of x is continuous. This equal to this equal to this. So that's the first question in exercise. So the second one, examine the continuity of the function. The perfect is equal to 2x square minus 1, that x is equal to 3, 10 to 5. Three, 10 to 5. 